Well, today we're going to take a quick look at the recently announced Pensacola Discovery. So here's the location map for Pensacola. And we did a video of the Pensacola Prospect. It's uh, just over 13 minutes long and uh, it looks at the uh, geology and the prospect and looks at the range of sizes uh, that were expected pre-drill. And the well was 415A2. It was drilled with the Merced Reliant, pictured here, and the operator shell with partners Deltic Energy and Wandias. Spudded 14th of November last year, and uh, the test results were announced on the 8th of February 2023. Any find greater than about 75 BCF should be sufficient to... Uh, pass and overcome the minimum economic field size, which means uh, that it should be an economic development. The results announced talked about a, a peak gas rate of 4.75 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. The top of the Hope Dolomite Reservoir, quite shallow really at uh, 1,745 metres. The reservoir thickness, that's the gross section, was reported to be 18.8 metres. Reasonable porosity at 16% and uh, the discussion as well as the gas, there was also some light oil. Now, not condensate. Condensate would be a much higher API gravity. This was a 34 to 36 API oil, so much more a, a typical uh, black crude floated around about uh, 18 barrels per day so it, it's only a sort of a, a minor constituent not the major phase present which being gas but you can imagine that's likely to be a wet gas we don't know what the sort of promote was that uh, deltic had when shell farmed in so 30 percent equity would not equate necessarily to this 11.1 uh, million she quite an expensive well that's the press release pause the video if you want to read that this is the p50 expected ultimate recoverable and that's of uh, 302 bcf remember that number we'll revisit that later there, there's the outline and see more in the previous video and we don't buy all the hype and here are some quotes that we read opens up a new play fairway well this play fairway was opened in the 1960s the zex time is one of the first targeted intervals in the entire north sea it's not really new it's it's reopened an old fairway one of the largest natural gas discoveries in the sector for over a decade don't buy that one either it's one well and uh, although it has flowed and it's flowed at a reasonable rate um, if you watch our first video on uh, pensacola it's kind of behaved more or less as we anticipated we don't get too tied down on reserves numbers on the basis of a single exploratory well we need to see some follow-up appraisal drilling and that's where we can get the sort of continuity the reservoir extent uh, and just get a better handle on how big the thing is. These were the numbers pre-drill. We don't know what all the parameters were assumed pre-drill, and we don't know if uh, they currently support this 302 BCF discovery. But I'm sure the operator or one of the partners will uh, inform the market at the appropriate time. It was reported that though the well flowed at a maximum rate of 4.75 million standard cubic feet of gas a day, that the rate fell away to 1.75 million scuffs within a period of, of some 12 hours. This symbol here is the does not equal symbol for those who are not mathematical. It basically, this does not equate to a connected gas in place of 302 BCF, I suspect. Have I done the calculations? We don't have enough information available in the public domain to undertake that calculation, but pretty comfortable in saying that that's not going to prove up 302 bcf so what is our take we're not trying to be negative here we're just trying to sort of be realistic our take is that it's a great start but we do need appraisal wells we've identified three key steps that need to be undertaken one possibly known already by the operator and partners is to establish what the composition of the gas is is there anything you know any nasties any inerts anything unexpected in the gas with the presence of a 34 to 36 api oil in the sample we would anticipate that the gas would be a wet gas I'm sure the joint venture will let investors know the outcome at uh, an appropriate time. Assess reservoir deliverability. Now, that's going to take a horizontal test. That means that uh, having to drill a horizontal well. Now, this is quite a shallow reservoir, and a lot of the sequences above it are quite compressed relative to other parts of the, uh, the Southern North Sea. There will be some challenges there, but trying to understand the connectivity and deliverability would require drilling a horizontal well for some thousands of 
of feet or meters. The third step is well planning. Drilling a horizontal well, not really quite as difficult as I'd first suspected. I thought it would be uh, actually difficult to build angle through halide, but I'm assured by some of my drilling colleagues that uh, no, in actual fact, you can build angle through halide quite effectively. Once you land out in the Haub Dolomite, you'd probably be setting your nine and five eighths casing and then drilling ahead with eight and a half inch bit through the horizontal section, trying to go in a straight line and essentially you wouldn't need to steer it too much, but stop it from going up or down. Dolomite being a pretty hard rock, there would be high vibrations and there would be quite a number of challenges to the tools and uh, also to the bottom hole assembly. So though it's not going to be quite a, an ERD well to drill, it is going to be quite a challenging well. There's still a ways to go, but it is a great start. So having a look at the players in the area, here's Pensacola, Shell's Acreage, Spirit Energy, Horizon Energy, one Dias, Capricorn Energy, and Ineos, operator of the Brea field. Here's the location of the Ossian Derrick discovery. We've done a video on that, and there'll be a link underneath. This is also an interesting one in the same play. It's currently sitting in open acreage, so it's been relinquished. Probably going to have been applied for in the 33rd licensing round. We'll follow up on that when the announcements are made. Here's the Crosscon discovery. Shell is a partner. Warm Dias uh, will be drilling a, an appraisal well on Crosscon. Expected to spud in the first quarter 2023. Here's the location of the Dabinet Prospect, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. Here's uh, Egden Resources Resolution. So the Dabinet Prospect, we can see there's a section from Horizon Energy showing the planned Dabinet Exploration Well. Uh, drilling here pretty much on the crest of this feature here. Now, if we turn our attention to a discovery that was made oh, way back some 40 odd years ago, in uh, 41 18 one, 41 19 one, and this sort of area. Although it's got a funny old name because it was actually given a, a land wells name. Here's the Haupt Dolomite depth map. This comes from uh, Egden Resources. And this is a nice looking prospect here. So close to shore that uh, you could actually drill it from shore, probably with a land rig quite cheaply. This is the funny old well name it got given by the Department of Trade and Industry at the time, the forerunner of today's NSTA. This well here. Here, 4124A3, which was drilled by Conoco back in, I think, 1991. It's an interesting well to look at because they actually tried to drill. It was a short horizontal uh, section, but a horizontal section nonetheless. It was drilled in the platinum dolomite, not underlying Z2, Haup dolomite. But it actually flowed at some 35 million standard cubic feet of day. So that would be a great sort of production flow rate, fantastic rate. And that was achieved in this well, albeit it was short lived, but it was in a very, very unusual geological setting, tectonic setting. It was a very, very small, thin horst that was being drilled. We speculated in the past about uh, Zechstein source rocks. There's been a lot of circumstantial evidence, and there is growing evidence for a Zechstein source rock. But in talking with APT, they shared with us some of the information. What they've done here is they've gone away and they've made a, a number of analyses. So some of the study wells are shown here with these blue crosses, and you can see that uh, they've looked at the Carboniferous. And when we look here at the Zechstein, well, the Zechstein carbonates typically do have very low uh, total organic carbon. However, you see that when you do find some of these intervals that are richer in organic material, you can see that we get up between 2, 3, 4, up to 8% uh, TOC. So indications that there are some quite reasonable source rocks within the Zechstein. Now, uh, in the source rock screening study, we can see that the uh, the pyrolysis yield here, and this is the S2, in essentially in parts per thousand, you can see that these numbers of anything sort of four, five and above is great. And when you're getting over 10, these are really good quality source rocks here. And I pretty much buy into the bands that APT have put on these here. So there does appear to be not just rocks that are, are rich in TOC, but they've actually looked like they've got a lot of hydrocarbon generative potential within those. They've done some oil screening as well. And here are the wells that have been studied in the region, showing some examples here. 
uh, stop the video and study this in a little bit more detail, but there is uh, certainly crude oil indications in many of these extracts that these are in the oil window, in essence. This one looking perhaps a little more biodegraded. And indeed, APT in their study, they conclude or identify four oil families here. Now, I don't uh, start to understand this figure, but contact APT. There's a lot of information, and uh, for those looking and exploring in the Southern North Sea, in this Zex, Stein. It's not all about the Carboniferous, Westphalian, or even the Murin and Dinantian source rocks. I think what you've got to start looking at in this region here is looking and understanding the Zechstein source rocks and the oil families waiting to be found out here. The sort of summary and conclusions from this, that based on the TOC rock eval, there are oil and gas prone source rocks proven in the Z1, Z2 and Z3. So that's the Zechstein kelp, Haup dolomite and the platinum dolomite. All source rock maturity increases towards the southern extent of the mid-north sea highs. So it's actually uh, getting more mature as you, as you go into the deeper parts of the Paleo Basin and where the uh, Zechstein interval thickens. The majority of the wells drilled to date have targeted Zechstein platforms and not the platform slope. And so, um, you know, onshore in the Cleveland Basin, you've got the gas finds at uh, Kirby Misperton, Moulton, Marishes, Pickering, up the road at Estale and Lockton and, and, and shows in others. Uh, so there have been a number of those drilled up on the platform, actually produced and uh, produced for a number of years, uh, if not decades. But um, it's on the platform slope. And the toe of the slope or into the basin facies where that's not been as well explored but that's where the potential may be because you're actually getting closer to the more distal more marly and more shaly intervals that are the source rocks where you get the preservation of the organic material in the source rocks and where they're thick enough then you can get uh, potentially very interesting amounts of hydrocarbon generated to actually source oil fields and gas fields so in summary, yes, Pensacola, it's an important discovery for the UK Southern North Sea Basin. No problem with that. It, it is a great start. It was not a cheap well, but the next one, it's likely to be very expensive. It's uh, the reopening of an old play. There is renewed interest in a lot of places uh, in the Zechstein carbonates and one we'll be following in the months and years ahead. The self-sourcing Zechstein source reservoir, well, they're becoming proven. They've been speculated a lot and we've talked about this on many of our previous videos, but not until now have we actually seen the, the hard data that APT have provided uh, that uh, actually show where it is and the the richness and the maturity of those source rocks. More wells are needed before a commercial discovery can be declared. Well, that's for sure. We don't like putting numbers of reserve sizes to single well discoveries until there's been a substantiation now. I'd like to congratulate Operator Shell and JV Partners Deltic Energy and Wandeus, and we wish them very good luck on the way forward. Indeed, we wish all Zechstein explorers every success in their ventures going forward. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long.